Hi, John. You've asked a couple of reasonable questions here. Uh, how is the devil getting so much credit from Christians? Is he omnipotent or something? Are there six billion demons available to haunt and taunt humans? Well, I'm no expert in demonology, but I'll try to do my best to explain what I believe, and you can take it for what it's worth. First of all, I understand that which comes out of the heart of men is evil, meaning humans have a potential to be the most vile, wicked creatures ever created. All we need is to be inspired to unleash it. And that inspiration doesn't need Satan or demonic forces. It can come from oneself, other men, circumstances, or, yeah, fallen angels or demons. Satan and the fallen angels are certainly limited in number. There's a cap on how many there are, as the Bible teaches Satan fell with a third of the angels from heaven. Of course, not knowing how many angels are in heaven, it becomes impossible to know what that number is, but I do not believe we're talking about millions or billions of fallen angels. Still, it's an unknown number. As for Satan being omnipotent, like his fellow angels, he is just an angel, thus limited in power. But that's like saying the old atom bombs that the U.S. dropped on uh, Japan are just bombs. Angels have supernatural abilities, but they're far from omnipotent. And I definitely believe they can only be one place at a time. They can make spot visits to push humans to do as they wish, meaning they could influence greater numbers of uh, people. But their influence on a few can affect thousands, millions, and who knows, maybe even billions. How? My friend, they only have to get the ball rolling. The power of television, for instance, makes it so demonic forces only need to influence those creating the program seen on TV. Once that's done, they let the tool do the rest. And this is true for any of the medium men have used books, music, video games, etc. It's all a matter of programming the population. Of course, the minions of the fallen angels, the demons, whom I believe to be the lost souls who were children of the fallen angels, the Nephilim, they're another story. There's no way of knowing how many of them are wandering the earth as evil spirits seeking embodiment. There could be thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions. In fact, let's be honest, if the fallen angels uh, bred with women creating these perversions of life, there's no reason to believe they haven't tried it again, adding to those numbers. Now these demons, I believe, are far more limited than fallen angels in terms of power. Their spiritual makeup being half human, half angelic. But one thing I believe that is different is that the demons are seeking bodies to possess. In the Bible, angels didn't seem to need to possess a body in order to make themselves known to men. Yet, demons clearly did possess people in the New Testament. Whether or not they are loyal to Satan and the fallen angels most likely varies. If I'm right, then the fallen angels would be their fathers, but that doesn't necessarily guarantee loyalty and obedience. While I think there could literally be millions of demons varying in levels of power, I do not believe there is a demon for every man, woman, and child on the planet. Satan gets a ton of credit from Christians because according to the Bible, he is the prince of this world, the prince of power of the air, the father of lies, the ruler of darkness. Add it all up, and it seems that Satan is the being who had the balls to stand up and rebel against God, and while that may appeal to the human sinful nature on some level, it's as misguided as those who jump from buildings believing they can fly. Of course, there is a lot of misinformation about Satan and the fallen angels that warps the perspective of many. Some view him as the anti-god, omnipotent but evil. Others think him to be non-existent and just a personification for evil. Obviously, if I'm right, neither one of those beliefs have any value in the realm of spiritual warfare. As the first grants him more power than he could ever have had on his own, and the other protects and shields him from any opposition at all. Is Satan to blame for everything bad in this world? Uh, that's kind of a trick question. I mean, if he led man to the first sin through extension, I suppose you could say so, but I don't think that's necessarily the case. I mean, we are responsible for our choices, and sometimes calling something bad is just a matter of perspective. An obvious example would be looking at the Nazis, for instance. The world rejoiced when they fell in World War II, but surely some of Hitler's loyal supporters had to see this defeat as a bad thing. And with that being said, most of us see the termination of millions of Jews as a bad thing, where others might see it as a good thing. That's why we're told to keep our eyes on Christ, as he is the compass of morality sent by God to guide us. So in conclusion, I'm saying Satan is a supernatural being in complete rebellion against God. Being supernatural, he appears to be powerful to humans, but his power is meaningless against God. If we, the humans, truly have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, Satan's power is diminished, and he can only do what we allow him to. But without the Holy Spirit, humans are wide open for a wide array of attacks. In my opinion, those who deny that Satan and demonic forces are working in this world have been blinded. 
leaving them utterly defenseless. Have you ever tried to spar with a blindfold on? Yeah, it doesn't work too well. What's worse is those who have been blinded typically aren't content to live within their blindness as they seek to free others from the thing they perceive to be an illusion. Knowing the enemy is very important if you're going to battle the enemy. And denying that he's there doesn't help anything. And embracing legends and myths really doesn't help anything either. So in my opinion, it's key that the Bible leads our understanding of these fallen angelic creatures and uh, the demons. Why? Well, if you put your faith in Christ, then you should put your faith in the Word of God as well. Just my opinion. Thought I'd throw it back at you. Hope you're having a great day, and I hope the Lord Jesus Christ opens your eyes, at least to the extent that I believe that I'm correct in this matter. Well, until next time, happy Jesus Day. God bless and peace out.